trophy in this superstar racing experience is on the line right now. Doug, a nice smooth start into one, didn't push up too far, kept his momentum up. Tony Stewart slides through into second. That'll put a lot of pressure on Kobe. There's Tony Kanan with a spot on the bottom of three and four in the 48, the Magenta car. And that white car on the outside, that's Greg Biffle now. Not in the gold car anymore. That's the backup car. That's the Biff trying to make some progress on the outside. Look at him go. Couple spots further up than that. You've got Marco Andretti in sixth place already. He came through. I, I didn't see the whole move, but in three and four, he got past a couple of cars. He's moved up three spots already. There is Marco. Off to a good start in this main event. Nobody's off to a better start than Greg Biffle, though. Right behind him, Biffle just underneath Bobby Labonte. So Greg Biffle picks up another spot, and that puts him into seventh place. Biffle now inside of Marco Andretti. Everybody giving each other room at this point in time. Biffle looks good. Somebody's going to complain about this tire situation. I was situation. just thinking about that. <laughs> oh, spin. Contact for third place. And around into the wall is Michael Waltrip. He and I believe it was Ernie Francis made contact. And we are under caution. Four laps in. Come on, Ernie. There was still a little bit of room down there. You weren't <laughs> in the grass. It doesn't take much, though. When you're running on the edge of the grip, especially at that point in the corner and you get the car loaded, I mean, it's very easy. Just one little one little nudge can, can, can spin you out. I think Ernie got in there pretty hot, too. He didn't look, he didn't look like he had a, a whole lot of control of how low he could keep it. He was... He definitely had his foot into it, but, uh, but they made a little contact out there. The SRX series as we take another look at this. Um. I mean, it hit hard enough. Yeah. <laughs> so here right. we go. Here they come. Green flag. That outside lane is working in one and two. Tony gets a run down the back straightaway. We'll see if he can clear him on the X in one of these corners. Tricky stuff. Marco Andretti to the inside of Francis also. That's for third place. Here comes Marco. Look at this. Bill Elliott has pulled off the track back onto the pit lane in his car. This for the lead. Doug Colby inside. Tony Stewart outside. Oh, spin on the front stretch. Willie T. Ribs in the grass. Hang on. Hang on. He's got it under control. We'll stay under green. I thought he was Three gonna... wide for the lead. Marco Andretti to the bottom of both Stewart and Kobe. Here comes Biffle to the inside of Stewart for second. Marco and Biff on the move. So Marco Andretti to the race lead in our main event, up eight positions since the start. Marco not running the full series of IndyCar racing this year for the first time after 15 straight seasons. Said he wanted to be out of his comfort zone. Well, he looked pretty comfortable making this move. Excuse me, you guys are playing Textbook. too nice. I want through. Of that just enough just he used him as a little bit of a wall and that's something that you can do when you get <laughs> underneath the car you know you slide up and you're like oh just a little help please and you're like oh thank you here comes greg biffle on marco andretti for the race lead kobe's gonna try and follow him through Ooh, wiggle there for kobe hung on to it greg biffle to the lead Orange car, Stewart. Black car, Andretti. Marco has to get out of the gas. He's going to lose a couple spots. That's Ernie Francis underneath him in the yellow car. 
I love how we can see Marco Andretti pass three wide on the inside to take the lead, and now we see him, he's back in fifth place. That happened quick. Yeah. Passing is happening. Here's Elio Castro Neves looking to the inside. Well, once he got the lead, Biffle has not gotten away from Doug Colby. So Biffle in that backup car, Colby in the red, white, and blue patriotic machine, the local hero. He's right up to the bumper there. And then on the other side, Biffle's like, okay, I got the lead. Now I'll just run just fast enough to stay in front of him. That could very well be you happening, know? too. Just fast enough. He's able to set the pace. Yep. Cont it's always harder to pass than be in the lead. Control the race. That was Doug Kobe's phrase. But look at him take the low run off two for the race lead. They're standing, they're cheering, they're waving their hats in that grandstand. Storybook, you know, you're coming out here, you're watching guys like Greg Biffle and Tony Stewart and Marco Andretti and Elio Castroneves, and then you've got your guy yep. who's who's doing it. Let's use up a little fender. It's like, hey, I'm here. Just it's play. harder than you think to know the boundary of your car just to that very perfect degree uh -huh. there are cautions to and get them all bunched up so the question is what do we call this we, we we talked about this earlier and again the whole object of the series is fan friendly so this is uh fan friendly and not fender fan friendly this it's fan that's very good <laughs> i like the alliteration we'll decide what we're going to call it in a minute but either way it's a yellow flag to bunch the field up and we get a look at Doug Colby and Greg Biffle under caution number two. Face cars off, here we go, back racing just shy of halfway in our main event. Doug Colby to the inside, red, white, and blue car. Greg Biffle to the outside, Tony Stewart's in the orange machine, and that is Elio Castroneves in that patched up red car who just went through into fourth place. Well, just for a minute, and Dreddy through, Castroneves getting knocked around. Here's Biffle outside for the race lead. Doug did an awesome job in turn one. He slid up just enough to close the door on the outside, but did it late enough in the corner to not let anyone get on the inside, and he maintained that lead. Now, oh, look at Biffle roll that car in there. Brad's right. He's looking sporty. More carnage from Michael Waltrip's car as he's caught in between Bobby Labonte and Ernie Francis. So I'm wondering how much damage was from the accident in three and four where he hit the outside barrier. And I'm wondering if the if the rear wing was perhaps knocked a little loose. He's got smoke coming out the back now as he comes around. I think it'd be interesting to see if he can keep going. And we just, say body work doesn't matter, but that yeah. rear wing might matter. And might, that, might matter. And that left rear tire is not going to live long with that. Uh, so Michael's been shown the black flag, and he'll have to come to the pit lane and have that attended to. There's a lot of pressure, and I can associate with that, too, and, and just a sense of getting into a new car and having that pressure. People ask me, do you want to get back in a car? And I'm like, no, nah, no. Nah. And, and, and you know what? Sometimes there's more downside. So I think this is awesome to see Marco in a, you know, stepping outside of that comfort zone, driving a car that he is definitely not familiar with driving, and doing a great job. He's in fourth place. He's running up on Tony Stewart right now. and. Nobody has more experience in a race car than Tony Stewart. I think he was really fast in practice. Oh, Whoa, trouble. oh, really fast in practice yesterday was what I was saying. But looks like he just caused a little bit of a caution. Caution behind can you, caution behind you. Get a replay, but he was inside of Marco into turn three. And here it is from our awesome drone. How hard did he get hit and how hard did he get the barrier, if at all? <laughs> just kept it off the outside. He's off the barrier, but I don't think he's going to be too happy with Elio there. No. I think Elio got in a little hot. Look at his, you can see the left front yeah. blowing. Yeah. Still on the brakes as he's spinning around. Yeah. This is what we want to see.
Oh, this would be a good look. This is Elio Castro Neves for the visor cam. <laughs> um, yeah, I think you see the hand in the air going, oh, yeah. shoot. You know? I'm sorry, Biffle's up front. That's Paul Tracy in the lime green car. All right, who gets the edge here? You know, I'm sure a lot of, there's a lot of stuff going on out there as Elio's talking about, like, you know, I don't know, I, I thought he saw me. We're, they're dealing with no spotters. Yeah. This is very foreign territory for drivers that are, especially someone like Elio, 46 years old. He hasn't had no spotter for God knows how long, long time, yeah. since he's been in a go-kart, probably running around a track, maybe at the only, only time. So. Doug Colby, the local hero, the 30-time winner in NASCAR Modifieds, the Modified Racing here at Stafford. He Player, finally edges ahead of Greg Biffle to get back to the top spot. You know what I notice about Kobe? He seems really, I don't know his reputation as a driver, but I, I, from what I can see, he seems smart. He seems patient. He doesn't look like he overdrives the car. He looks like he's able to find that limit pretty well, but not go over it. Even if it takes an extra lap to get clear of the car, he's patient enough to wait for that. Enough to put Paul Tracy a lap down if he can. Remember, Tracy's car damaged in an incident earlier in the night, so you could see it he's does been... not look comfortable. He's been struggling out there to try and, and to keep it between the walls. But the leader is by cleanly and without incident, and okay. Greg Biffle will look for some running room there to keep up and try and keep the pressure on. Again, keep in mind they don't have spotters. because in, right. in that, that moment, as a, if you have a spotter, somebody's telling Paul Tracy, like, your lap traffic, second place is right behind you, but he doesn't... He doesn't have that, and he's just, it looks like he's having to hang on for dear life anyway, so. Caution, got a car throwing sparks over turn number two. Is that Marco Andretti? It looks like the black, the black car. Yes, it is. Guys, this is the dream come true. Six <laughs> to go. Right front, go down. Yeah, well, something like that. He had some bodywork damage uh, in, uh, just behind that right front. You see where it's flapped back there, right right where it says Camping World? Yep. That's been flapped back the whole time. I don't know if that's any part of what could have been going on underneath or if perhaps, I mean, there's a lot of bodywork damage on the front. I don't know if he caught the wall earlier that we, you know, some few laps earlier that we didn't see. But Oh, look, that tire's locked up. Interesting. Wow, that's different. I'm not the best technical girl, but I could tell right now, on, I could say what I'd say on the radio right now. Um, right front, home <laughs> <all> turn, <laughs> locked up. I don't know what it is, but it's real important. <laughs> yeah. Went right to the rim. Possibility that with some of that damage on the right front, the brake cooling was affected. And there's all kinds of things that could have happened. Ace car is off. Kobe inside. Biffle outside. Stewart Labonte row number two. Fans on their feet. Here we go. Kobe's going to get away. Stewart couldn't stay underneath Biffle. Here they come to the white flag. We're entering the last lap of the race. This is where you just kind of forget where the brake zone is and you go, oh well. Sail it in and see. Come on. What a dream come true. These fans are going to go bananas. Their local track hero is going to beat the superstars tonight. Doug Kobe wins at Stafford. Thousand people just love to see him come across the start finish line as the winner. Great job. Let's go to Matt. Be the upstart to come in and slay the champions. Doug Kobe did it tonight in Connecticut at his home track.